Got a question for you. Got several questions for you tonight. So, question for you. Who do you hate? What? What did you say, Pastor? Who do I hate? That's what I asked tonight. Let me ask you another one. This is going to get thick tonight. So what grudge are you holding against someone? Or don't click off yet. Don't say, I, I don't think I'm going to hear this tonight. Because we all need it. All of us need it. And I desire to be a blessing to you this evening. So what issue has happened in your relationship with someone and you're still holding on to that grudge or someone is holding a grudge against you and it just can't seem to be any forgiveness through the process. Well, that topic talk tonight is going to be dealing with the subject, how to love your enemies. And I know you're just clapping your hands and you're jumping up and down for joy in your living room or wherever you are. Just don't clap your hands and jump up and down with joy if you're driving a car. But yeah, I know that uh, I know what you're thinking tonight. Well, Pastor, that's none of your business, and uh, why don't you just leave that alone and not go there? Well, I am going there, and I want to bless you tonight because this is a uh, common issue that all people share, face, and have, or or perhaps going through currently right now. I'm not going to slap you around, and and I'm not going to hurt you in any way. I'm going to deal with you lovingly and showing you tonight how that you can love your enemies from a Jesus perspective, which makes all the difference in the world. Jesus said plenty of shocking countercultural and different things during his time while he was here on this earth. But maybe the most shocking command that he gave us was to love your enemies and to pray for your enemies. And that's kind of sometimes a tough thing to do that we have to face. So, love your enemies? So, the question is, in the environment in which we're living in today, and this craziness that we are facing daily, and not knowing what's next? So, who's doing that? Well, they're your enemy for, they're your enemy for a reason, right? And so, and it's a good reason, probably. You can justify or try to justify that reason. They hurt you. They spread lies about you. They've done something against you. They violated your trust they stabbed you in the back and they're seeking your demise and they ruined your life and they hurt someone that you care about and on and on and on and on and you say well they are they're my enemies and I'm supposed to hate them and I'm supposed to fight them and I'm supposed to snub them and I'm supposed to do all the things that I'm doing are you see your enemies don't deserve love they deserve payback don't they that's what you think get even you know folks while the rest of the world does what makes what we think in our mindset which is logical sense jesus takes a different approach to this he says love your enemies and pray for your enemies and so therefore tonight we're going to do a little in depth on this and that's really a hard pill to swallow for some of us i'm sure because who has not been done wrong by someone else and people that tonight that you know that you really put in the same category as an enemy tonight so many of us you know see that and it's easier to hate your enemies than it is to love them and you say well I, i'm sure the lord understands does he i don't know i don't believe so but i think this is a common thing or a command tonight we face this in a common setting but it's a command tonight that we need to revisit on how to love and pray for our enemies this evening. I think we've missed the significance of why we should love our enemies and how to actually do that. And the Bible gives us explicitly the terms on how in order to accomplish that. So let's jump right in tonight and look at what it means to love your enemies and to pray for those who even despitefully use you. Love your enemies. The verse is found to start understanding how to love your enemies tonight. We first have to look at what the command is that Jesus gave us in Matthew 5, which happens to be a part of the Sermon on the Mount, which is good scriptural living uh, guides for our life as Christians. So this is what he said. I'm starting with verse 43, and I'm reading down through 48. You've heard that it's been said that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, or as thine enemy, and hate thine enemy. Let me try that again. You've heard that it has been said, thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. 
But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, and do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you, and persecute you, that you may, may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on, uh, he maketh, maketh the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and he sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. For if we love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do ye even the, uh, do not even the publicans the same? And if you salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do ye not even the publicans so? So, verse 48 says this, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. These verses tonight are part of the Sermon on the Mount, as I just told you a moment ago. And Jesus does in this passage what he often does. He raises the bar on the expectation of where he wants us to be in our spiritual life. The standard, the standard expectation tonight that exists is to love your friends and to hate your enemies. That's pretty much the common theme in society today and everyone does that jesus takes it a step further and says there's a better way isn't him his way always a better way as a matter of fact isaiah said that his ways are higher than the heavens you shouldn't love those who just love you but also you should love those who hate you that's a tall order pastor it is a tall order but doesn't god equip us to do that very thing doesn't he give us the grace and doesn't he give us the the power and the wisdom and the knowledge and doesn't he give us the strength to do what we cannot do within ourselves? because honestly he is our refuge and strength he is our help and we can't walk through life without him now this is somewhat revolutionary in one sense that it's countercultural, and realizing that that uh, this mentality of loving your neighbors and praying for those who despitefully use you you know it could change the world and if ever there was a time where the world needed to be changed is today. You can't turn on the radio, you can't watch news, you can't listen to a talk program if there's not a critical spirit of, of people today. And so while we're still enemies to, of God, we have to look at what he did for us. He went to the cross and died for us and Jesus showed us his ultimate act of love for you and I, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He modeled that for us, and He became that example, and He commands us now to do the same. Now, I'm not going to stand here tonight and tell you under God's blue dome that that's an easy thing and you could just snap your finger and do it. No, you've got to condition yourself. You've got to pray. You've got to seek the Lord. You've got to learn the process of forgiveness. We want forgiveness, but we've also got to be willing to give it also. So let's dive into a little bit further into why you should love your enemies and pray for those who despitefully use you. That bird is saying amen. You hear him? He's squalling. Why, why should you love your enemies and pray for your enemies tonight? You should love your enemies because Jesus first loved you and I. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. That's what Jesus did for you and I. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Listen, Jesus is not giving you what you deserve. If we got what we deserve tonight, none of us would have hope, none of us would have help, none of us could experience grace. So tonight, we don't deserve His love. He's giving you what you desperately need. And I'm glad He avails it to all people that will come to Him. You've been forgiven of much, haven't we all? I mean, you think about your life tonight. We're not perfect. We're not all of that. No, indeed. We all miss the mark. So. Your massive debt has been paid in full of all the sins that you have committed and your freedom has been purchased through the, through the redemptive blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, because of what he has done for you tonight, you have been changed. And tonight that change then has created a change that tonight you can do the same. That tonight you can forgive those who've wronged you. You can pray for those tonight that needs prayer that's on the wrong path or misused you or done something wrong against you or whatever. You say, well, I'll never trust them again. That's another topic. The fact of the matter is tonight you'll never trust them again until you learn to forgive them first. Did you hear that? You've got to learn the forgiveness process. And so therefore tonight, 
you can love your enemies because you have been loved tonight by God when you were an enemy of the Most High God. We were all. The Bible says we're all aliens and alienated from God, separated from God. Uh, we are alienated. By that I mean we are not a part of God. And, but there's another piece to this puzzle. You should love your enemies because how you treat people tells then about how much Jesus you've got in your life, right? Well, Pastor, I go to church on Sunday and I read my Bible and I pray, but I just can't, I just can't love people. Well, something's wrong then with your relationship. That's not the way God wants you to live. Could it be tonight that you're robbing yourself of the blessings of the Lord because you can't experience and you can't give that forgiveness? We want to receive it, but we then got to be willing to give it, and especially those you, that you disagree with or those who have hurt you. Don't miss this. There are people tonight who don't know Jesus, and today they're watching your life, and they're making assumptions about what Jesus is like by the way that you conduct yourself and the way that you live. Those people around you tonight realize today and they see who Jesus really is in you tonight. And tonight we ought to portray Christ in an image that He tonight is a forgiving, loving God and He cares for all people tonight. And so therefore, how do you love your enemies? How do you pray for your enemies tonight? Or tonight, how do you tell someone about Jesus tonight in your living every day, you very well might be the only picture that someone may see of Jesus in their life and how you conduct yourself and how you live your life could be vitally important in that person coming to the saving knowledge of Christ. I would hate the thought of, of the unforgiveness in my life and, and my attack on people how it would be a detriment and cause someone else to miss heaven. Wouldn't that be shameful? That would be horrible. Friend, listen tonight. We have to be tonight accountable and responsible. That's why we should love our enemies. No, it's not a snap of the finger process. God will give you grace. You first have to go to Him and seek His grace in order to accomplish that. We love our enemies because Jesus loved us when we were His enemies, and we should love our enemies because we are the, the hands and the feet of the Savior. So let's look at how to love your enemies tonight. And I just got some real practical ways, very simplistic ways that you can do this. And I think it's about six of them, five of them, something like that. So how do you love your enemies? And so right here is how we're going to find out. First today, you've got to pray for a healing, a healing from the brokenness and bitterness. And you've got to pray for your enemies. That's the first step. That's where you've got to start. Let me say it again. You've got to pray for healing from brokenness and bitterness. And tonight I'm going to tell you something. Bitterness will destroy you. It will annihilate you. It will rob you of your testimony. And it will render you bankrupt before God. So therefore tonight, your enemies are probably enemies for a good reason. And tonight, I understand those things. They've hurt you in some way or hurt someone that you love. They, you know, the hurt that our enemies have caused is not a fictitious hope. It's a, I mean, it's not a fictitious thing. It's a hurt. It's a real hurt tonight. Even if it seemingly was small, it still leaves scars that we deal with and struggle with. So the first step in loving our enemies is finding healing for the wounds that they have caused. And prayer is where we have to start because prayer is that communication with God. We pour our hearts out to God and we don't have to try to glaze over things or try to impress God because He knows our hearts. He knows everything and every depth of our heart about us. So we should take our brokenness, our pain and our bitterness to God. We should ask Him to bring healing into our lives this isn't an overnight fix, as I just told you a moment ago, but it will take some time. It may take even a lifetime, but that's okay. You've got to start the process. And the question tonight I throw at you, have you started the process of healing by praying for healing for those who have hurt you in some particular way? So learning how to love your enemies starts with recognizing the pain and seeking healing through prayer. So we're always about what somebody did to me. Let's reverse the table. How about something that you've done to someone else? Because we're all guilty of that, aren't we, really, tonight? But it's always about me, mine, and I. But tonight, we've got to look at it in the scope that God sees it tonight. Secondly, tonight, you've got to practice empathy tonight. You've got to put yourself in their shoes. We are increasingly becoming a more and more polarized society. And if you don't believe that, just look at the condition of our nation and our world. 
in what we have, we have gone through and what we're continuing to go through it, I don't know if it's ever going to change. To be quite honest, and that's not a negative, it's just a reality. This has led us to basically lobbing stones at those that we disagree with and our enemies. If you don't believe that, listen to some of the talk programs. Get on the news tonight and hear what's happening. I'm telling you, it's very depressing. But instead of throwing stones, you know, we should be extending a hand and praying for. I, I'm not saying tonight that you condone what a person does. You've got to learn to forgive what a person does and pray for God to deal with our heart. To love our enemies, we need to put ourselves sometimes in their shoes tonight. And I would bet if you actually got to know that person, you can't stand, maybe. Uh, I mean, actually listen to them, not argue with them, but genuinely listen and sit down and let them express themselves and listen to their story and listen to what has happened in their life and listen to sometimes what has occurred through their living tonight. Maybe you would see through different eyes and maybe you would understand a little bit better. Don't miss this. Even if they don't believe, even if what they, they believe is wrong and, and, and it's not in, in accordance with God's will, they still probably have good reason why they're doing it, but you're never going to change their heart by attacking and, and basically trying to in some way uh, attack or tear down their character or assault their reputation. Learning how to love your enemies means tonight you've got to practice empathy tonight. Put yourself in their shoes. Let that person become human and just not a target tonight for your attacks. Sometimes people do things. We don't understand the, sh the stress that they're under. We don't understand the problems that they're facing. They may be a private type person. I know I am. And, uh, you know, maybe we don't know what they've faced or faced or facing. After all, they are created in the image of God and loved dearly by our God. So we will love them. Third, find a common ground. When we are in conflict, we tend to focus on what's wrong with another person. We are quick to point out their shortfalls or where they have fallen in some particular area of their living. We find all the faults and diff differences that we can find. We focus on the negative, but still, instead, I believe there's all. I believe there's positive in every person tonight. And I, I get, you know, I get. This is tough, but. I bet there's something tonight you can find in any person that that maybe you don't like, but there's something tonight that maybe you could admire about them. Tonight, I'm telling you, I promise you there's something there. You've got to find a common ground, and you've got to seek to resolve not to continue to create havoc. And I know tonight that can be rather tough in our living, in our living but there's, a, there's at least one thing tonight you should be able to find in a common area, a common ground that you can sit out and talk and try tonight, as I use the phrase, bury the ax and the handle. Folks, tonight you have that in common tonight. You've got to find tonight a focus that you can focus upon and the Lord is a certainly a good focus God created and he loved that person and tonight he can make a difference through you in their life. Fourth tonight, you've got to learn the process to forgive. I know that's a tough subject, and I know some of you right now, you just turned off a little switch. Maybe you turned it off at the beginning, I don't know. There's an incredible amount of unforgiveness in our culture that we're living in today. I mean, there is so much hatred and division in our nation, it's pathetic. Where's the church? Where are the Christians? We should be living examples of the forgiveness and the grace of God, shouldn't we? We live in a council culture tonight. We love calling people out for their mistakes. We love exposing them. We love tonight showcasing them about everything that they've done wrong. You make a mistake and you basically are canceled. You're thrown in a heap. You're no longer any good. Well, I think there's value in every person tonight and God can turn a life around. So if you play by those rules tonight, eventually you may be one that gets canceled too because we all are sinners and we all fall short, don't we? We all miss the mark. The scriptures tell us that. Jesus tonight provides and offers us a way out. He gives us what we need and not what we deserve. What is that? It's called grace. Grace tonight that was purchased at the cross for you and I. We've been forgiven of much. Therefore, we should forgive others of their transgressions, their sins, and their iniquities. It's not fair and it's not easy. It cost Jesus his life. And I'm going to tell you, if you have a forgiving heart, and if you're going to be usable for God's kingdom, 
you've got to learn the cost of forgiveness. But when we show grace, we offer forgiveness and we're showing people, actually we're showing them a glimpse of what Christ did on the cross for you and I. In a culture today that relishes in pointing out others' failures and mishaps and blunders in life, imagine the impact that the church is poured out when we pour out a lavish amount of the, of the grace of God upon a person tonight, even upon our enemies. So part of loving your enemies tonight is learning to forgive them for what they have done to us, just as Jesus has forgiven us. Oh, that's different, Pastor. No, it's not. If Christ forgave us and forgave me and forgave you, then we tonight are the living examples of the forgiving power of what he accomplished at the cross. Fifth tonight, we're almost through. Pursue unity and peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God, part of the Beatitudes. In Matthew 5, Jesus lays out the distinguishing marks of his kingdom. And one of the marks is that we are to be peacemakers, to make peace. But to do that, listen tonight, it does, we can't go around throwing gasoline tonight on a fire. Tonight, that's not the way we solve issues. We don't chime in and give our opinion and tear somebody's reputation and character down. That's not what Jesus calls us to do. In a world that is broken, divided, and it is so broken, our nation, our communities are so shattered tonight. We should be pursuing the peace and the unity that only Christ can give. And that includes with our enemies. It's possible to be friends with someone who views the world maybe a little bit different than we do. But it's possible tonight to stand, though, in your convictions in love. We don't become tonight people of malice and, and hate. We pray. We seek God. And we know that He is a way maker. It's possible tonight even to love someone that you disagree with. It's possible tonight to find peace even with your enemies tonight. After all, that's what Jesus has done for you and I and the redemptive power that he's extended to us tonight. Part of loving your enemies means tonight pursuing peace with them. Oh, I've got another one, and you'll love this one. Be patient. All this takes time. It's not, like I said, a snap of the finger process. It's not going to change overnight. Be patient. Try to be an example to others. Take time, and that's okay. We are on a transformative journey, and we have been transformed by the power of God, and we're looking for more each day to be like Christ and to be an example of His love. Be patient with your enemies. The same journey that you're on is one that they are on too. So just as you won't change overnight, neither will someone else. But tonight you can win the heart. Tonight you can change a person's life. Give them the time. And Jesus is the perfect example of that tonight. And it's far more important that we are patient tonight in realizing that tonight God can change us. He models us. And tonight he gives us the posture that we should take tonight. We should, tonight should, should be patient with our enemies. We should pray for them. And then in closing tonight, and the closing thought I have for you tonight is how to love your enemy. I know this is an easy, and this has been a kind of a tough topic tonight to deal with on Topic Talk, but the command to love your enemy is why many abandon following Jesus. That's why they throw in the towel and quit. It's hard. And let me tell you what. Tonight, we have got to not look to conventional wisdom of the world because there is none. We've got to look to the wisdom of God. And He said He will give it to us liberally and upbraideth not. It's different tonight. And it's different when we choose the path that God has chosen for us tonight. And we're talking about what Jesus has done for us over 2,000 years ago. He lived out his command to love your enemies and everything changed. And my friend, tonight we can change our neighbors, our families, our co-workers, our neighborhoods. We can change our in total environment at churches. If tonight we will learn tonight to be a follower of Jesus and learn the value of having a forgiving heart and to love and to pray for and to get out of that mode of criticism and get out of that mode of complaint and get in that mode tonight instead of fighting tonight learn to turn the other cheek and learn to get on your knees and start praying tonight so this evening it's an interesting study and I pray tonight that uh, your heart has been touched 
and I pray tonight that you'll feel the, uh, the, the desire tonight to put Jesus first in your life and seek tonight peace and seek tonight to learn to serve the Lord even in these tough times in which we're living tonight. I know this has been an, a tough subject to deal with tonight and you may agree, you may, may disagree tonight. Feel free to comment. You're not going to insult me whether you agree or disagree with me tonight. And by the way, if I can help you with this in any way, I'm available to you, and I'll be more than glad to do whatever I can to assist, help you, and bless you tonight. Well, thank the Lord. Topic Talk, a ministry of Gethsemane Baptist Church. Yeah, we come with some hard-hitting issues sometimes, but that's how we grow in the grace and the knowledge of the, of the Lord, by tonight confronting those issues and seeking God's solutions.